This is the perfect morning routine. And it's easy and simple. And it was developed by two different Stoics, two different, completely different men, completely different lives. You know, one was a slave, a Greek born slave, had nothing, um, had his legs snapped by his master, had a very difficult life. And the other was the philosopher king, one of the greatest figures in human history and one the most famous Stoic, Emperor Marcus Aurelius, a man that was born into immense wealth. Um, he was born into the Greek agogi training, training like the Spartans from a young age, living like the Spartans. He was um, surrounded by the greatest mentors. His father, his adoptive father, made sure that he had the greatest mentors, the greatest philosophical teachers and stoic tutors around him from such a young age. So this young boy would become a great emperor, which he did. He became known as the last great emperor of Rome. Uh, during He served during the Pax Romana, the golden age of the Roman Empire. And his downfall, his death, was the downfall of the Roman Emperor. Today's episode is powered by Huel. Let's jump into the episode. So these two men, Epictetus the slave and Marcus Aurelius the philosopher king, they developed a morning routine separate of each other. They both had a morning routine that was so simple. It only takes about five minutes. It can be longer if you want. It can be short if you want. It depends on the time you have. But they both developed a morning routine. And I think their morning routine, both of them, it, it starts your day off good. It starts your day off right. And, you know, a good morning usually leads to a good afternoon, which starts to taper off towards a good night and so repeats the cycle. So the idea with just one of these exercises is that your morning will start off right and you'll start to feel a bit more happier, a bit more grateful, a bit more confident throughout your day. Um, and that's the same with Mox Aurelius routine and Epictetus. It's slightly different, um, but that's not the good part. That's not the important part. Doing the morning routine once, uh, yeah, it'll give you a good day. It'll make you feel good throughout the day. It'll, it'll make you feel confident and grateful. Um, it's the best start to the day, but that's not a good part. The progress that's made by doing this consistently, as Epictetus said, that is the important part. We live in this world where we believe that we've been handed this block. Um, our life is this wooden block in front of us. And that's it. Uh, we are uh, Richard Garrison that does this job, is this kind of character that never does this, never does that, never says this, never steps out of line, um, not very confident. That's you, Richard, if you're listening. Hold on, Richard. Um, and you believe that block is yours. I, I was under this block. I believed that I was a laborer. Um, I was never going to be happy, never going to be confident, always going to be anxious. And this is my block because life handed me the block. But the truth is life does hand you a block, but life also hands you the tools to shape this block into whatever it may be. But it just takes time. It takes skill. It takes a lot of effort to learn how to shape this block. It takes a lot of effort to learn how to shape your life. But these morning routines, I've merged them together. I've created a step so you can follow this. Every morning, it's so simple. Um, by the end of this video, you'll have it memorized easy. And this idea is that every morning you start to shape this block and you start to shape it. And in a good direction, it's giving you guidance because it's hard. You can try to shape your own block, but if you don't know where to go, you're going to uh, carve something pretty ridiculous that you're not happy with. I don't know. It leads you to ruin. So this guidance is perfect. The progress is perfect. It is unrivaled. This is the perfect morning routine because it's simple and it's good. And these men, <clears throat> Epictetus actually inspired Marcus Aurelius. Um, these were great men for history. Um, you, you know what's amazing? Um, Marcus Aurelius wrote a personal diary, which is, which is here. He wrote this diary for himself. And Epictetus spoke these words and a student of his, Arian of Nicomedia, wrote them down and they've survived for, for 2000 years. They've survived and impacted the lives of millions, changed the lives of millions and saved the lives of millions. That's why I first read this. People were like saying like, it saved my life. You have to read it. You have to read it. Anyway, from just tiny passages in this book, whole new therapeutic techniques, whole new therapies, branches of therapy have been have been built off of just a few passages in this book. Um, 
the the life advice you, you read here is unrivaled, unmatched, unparalleled. Um, and what better thing to start than the best morning routine written by these two men merged together? Something quite unique. So I'll start explaining them, then I'll give you the steps, the step-by-step -step guide on how to actually do it in the morning. So at the end of this video, you can just remember these steps and have the perfect morning routine, which will lead you to progress. It'll start you there right, but it'll lead you to progress. So first Epictetus. Epictetus was the Greek born slave turned philosopher. Epictetus said that the Stoics should rehearse the day ahead upon rising in the morning. At daybreak, we should ask ourselves, what do I still lack in order to achieve freedom from passions? What do what to achieve tranquility? Then we should ask a question based on the famous inscription at the Delphic Oracle of Apollo. Know thyself. For the Stoics, we continually risk alienation from our true nature and descent to the levels of mindless wild beasts or cattle. By allowing our attention to slip, we should therefore ask, what am I? Secondly, from Marcus Aurelius, the, the philosopher king. Look, said the Pythagoreans, at the sky in the morning, that we may recall those hosts of heaven that ever follow the same course and accomplish their work in the same way and their orderly system and their purity and their nakedness, for there is no veil before a star. So what is the morning routine? This morning routine will only take five minutes of your morning. Um, and it is not the morning routine. It's not just doing it once that's going to be the thing where you're going to, it's not that thing that's going to blow your mind, make you into someone that's unrecognizable to your former self. It's not, that's not going to make you into the person you're destined to be, the best version of yourself. It's not going to fix all your problems. It's going to make you have a good day. It's going to make you feel grateful. It's going to make you happier, calmer, more confident about your day. No doubt about that. Um, it, it's great. Just doing it once is great. But it is the consistency of doing it every day uh, where you start to see the progress in your life. Um, you start to reflect on who you are, um, what your aim is, uh, what you're striving towards, um, and why the external shouldn't bother you. You know, you start to realize all these things in a small amount of time. So, whatever time you set your alarm, doesn't matter. I don't care if you get up at four, three. I think if you get up at three, you haven't really got up early. You've got up late. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, um, say you set your alarm seven o'clock before work. You've got to get to work at eight, so it gives you an hour window. Alarm goes off. Wake up. Step one. You woke up. You turn your alarm off. Number two, do not look at your phone. That's important because you don't want the first thing to do when you wake up to be always random things on your phone to flood your mind. Um, come on, it can be easy to ignore your phone for just 10 minutes. Just don't look at your phone. Wake up, don't look at your phone for 10 minutes. Now, go to your window. Okay, yeah? Go outside. Um, go outside, go to your window. And if you're in a place that doesn't allow you to go outside or look out a window, then you can do this through imagination. But I must say, um, doing this outside will enhance the um, experience. It will enhance um, how effective this is tenfold. So say to yourself, whilst looking at the sky or just reflecting on the sky, the universe is in motion. I am part of that motion. The universe will continue its motion regardless of my interference. Therefore, I trust and love the divine nature or power of the universe. This is in order to let go of the weight of externals you've been holding. So you put all your trust in the universe and you allow it to carry all your burdens of the external. The idea here is, uh, I know many of you aren't spiritual, don't believe in all this. The idea is just to trust because we cannot affect the externals, um, the way people behave, the weather, the traffic, all these kind of things, um, the world going on around us. We don't control these things. So to lighten that weight off us, to lighten that burden, we say to ourselves, the universe has got this. The universe is in motion. I'm just part of that motion. The universe has handled all the externals. It is my job to focus on myself, to focus on the internal world, the things I do control the world that I govern. 
So now you've looked at the sky, you've reflected on the universe, it's got your back, you, the universe is holding all the externals. You've got the internals. Now you ask three questions. How can I be free of passions? How can I find tranquility? Number nine, what do I lack? What is in the way? Passions, the understanding by the Stoics is um, the bad, the vices, the bad impulses, the, the, the greed, the cowardice, um, the selfishness, these kind of things. That is the passions. When you do something you know you shouldn't do. Um, so how can you free yourself of these things? Um, and you, only need, you need to think of an answer for each of these questions. A quick word from our sponsor, Huel. I really like Huel. When I was writing my book, I was using Huel to power me through every single day. When I had my daily greens, when I had my meals, when I had my shakes, it stopped me from going to the shop, buying a load of rubbish, buying a load of unhealthy food, wasting loads of money. And these things do add up. Those quick journeys to the shop every day, the money adds up, the unhealthy foods add up, the wasted time adds up. So if I ever get those cravings, I grab a Huel and it fills my cravings. I feel good, it tastes delicious, it's quick and easy. And if you have any interest in the Huel products, then check the link in the description. Let's get back to the episode. So, how can I be free of passions? Think, how can I be free of passions? What passion is befalling me now? Uh, do I keep um, doom scrolling? Do I keep um, getting uh, offending people? Do I keep doing this? Whatever it is. And just think, how can I do it? Um, maybe if I'm doom scrolling all the time, um, get away from my phone at certain times, set restrictions on them, that kind of thing. Um, and then number two, how can I find tranquility? How can you find tranquility? Um, are you being disturbed by the things you see online? Are you being disturbed by always getting involved in arguments? Um, are you being disturbed by um, this annoying guy at work? Um, just think about it. You want tranquility, what's disturbing you? Um, and what do I lack? Um, the thing is, is this is how you start to notice progress and you start to develop progress. You, it's just little things. So um, what's getting in the way of your tranquility? There might be a million things, a thousand things getting in the way of your tranquility. But today, if you just um, don't go on Twitter too much, um, then you've restricted the, the things in the world, the externals that are affecting your tranquility. Um, if you have that annoying guy at work, um, you avoid the area. These kind of things. Um, you know, if, if caffeine's making you agitated, avoid caffeine. And soon you start to whittle away, as Bruce Lee say, hack away at the inessential, the closer to the source, the less wasted stress. Bruce Lee wanted us to stop trying to get so much. And our mission is to just notice the things that are disturbing us, the things that are causing us um, unbalanced, the things that is taking away from our freedom, the things that is taking away from our tranquility, and slowly hack away at these things. Um, once you have your answer, you ask the question based on the famous inscription of the, uh, the Delphic Oracle of Apollo, know thyself. So you, you've realized what's um, disturbing your tranquility. You realized um, what's um, how to be free of passion. Just one little thing that you can do, be aware of, awareness is key. Um, and then you say to yourself, know thyself, who am I? And I don't mean who the world says you are, uh, not your past, not your fears, not your anxieties. Who are you actually? What is this small soul inside you that's trying to get out into the world, that wants to be free, wants to express himself in a certain way, whatever way you want to express yourself, unrestrained, bound, boundless, not bound by the rules of society, not bound by the person you think you are, thought you was, the person that society tells you are, your anxiety tells you are, your fears you are. Um, you know, I, I was always like, I thought I was this quiet person that didn't want to talk to people, um, that didn't have much to say, um, but that's wrong. I like talking to people. I like teaching you. I like getting the, these lessons across from the ancient Stoics that I know can change people's life. I love it. But I spent more than 20 years of my life thinking I didn't like this sort of thing because society told me that. And if I had this morning routine, after a few weeks of reflecting on that, I would have gone, I want to actually teach people. I want to help people. I like this. So that is the perfect morning routine. And hopefully after a few days, weeks, whatever, you start to notice progress. I really, there's no point listening to the ancient 
philosophies, the life-changing philosophies and principles that you hear if you're not going to incorporate them into your life. Because then it's just a bit of entertainment, which is fine. You can be entertained by these things. Um, you get that. People like listening to self-help and stuff because it gives you a little dopamine boost because you, you hear some advice and you go, oh, that's going to make my life better. But then you put it off. It won't make your life better if you don't put it into your life. Um, the goal is to resist that urge to just discard it. The goal is to do it right now. Leave a comment. Tell me you're going to do it. I need to know that you're making progress and track your progress. And that is it for day 18 of 100 Stoic School with myself, William Mulligan, author of The Everyday Stoic. I'll just swipe through. That's the three I have right now, the UK, the American, and the Dutch version. There's 16 more. No, there's not 16. There's 13 more. Um, 16 in total. Um, I can't wait to get my hands on them. I can't wait for you to get your hands on them. Also, just a quick note, if you're enjoying these lessons uh, and you like listening to my voice, uh, which is odd to say, but people like listening to my voice. Um, I don't really like listening to my voice. Well, I, I like listening to these lessons. I like listening to them back. But anyway, um, someone actually commented saying they'd like to hear me read the meditations and to read my own book. Well, lucky day for you. I haven't read the meditations. Well, I have. I've read this one hundreds of times. Um, I mean, it's like... Looks like one of those madmen, like, you know, they've only got one book in prison and they're like scribbling. Anyway, I read my own book, um, which is this book here. Um, went to a studio, um, Mount Street Studios, did an amazing job. The sound quality is perfect. They had a great team working on the sound, editing it, perfect. But we also had a great team, a pen the Penguin team, um, experts. Um, listening to me so they were lis listening I had these big headphones on I had people listening and I'd be reading a book you know um, I'd be telling my stories and then they'll say William can you just restart that a bit you didn't get that point across quite right um, that so on and so forth and they've done it so well that it makes me sound like I'm a professional um, which it's good it's a really good experience it's only four hours so if you want to read my book but you don't like reading or you haven't got time to read um, just this is this. If you have an hour commute a day, it takes you four days to listen to my whole book. And this is my everything. Um, every lesson you'll hear on, on at Stoic School, um, it's good. It really, like, they're completely different, a whole different thing. The, these are explaining the Stoicism, how to incorporate it into your life, you know, step by step. This is my decade long journey, um, how I actually incorporated them into my life, uh, real life situations, how I got over my certain problems um, and the things I learned along the way, mentors, things they taught me. Um, and Penguin did an amazing job the way they structured it um, and the way just it's so good. Anyway, I'm just self bragging now. But it's available for audiobook and it is available. I know um, I'm, and I keep talking about this, but people don't understand because people keep asking me, where do I get it in America? It's available in America. It just looks different. It looks like this. Uh, it's available in US and Canada, actually, um, on Amazon. Just go on Amazon.com or go to um, the Hachette website. Um, buy it from there. They love it when you buy it from there. Um, or go to Barnes & Noble, wherever you want to go. And if it's not in your Barnes & Noble for whatever reason, because it should be, say to them, say, hey, get this book in. It's really awesome. Um, anyway. Thank you for listening to day 18 of 100 Stoic School on the topic of the best morning routine, Stoic morning routine. Um, if you want to show me support, give me a like, give me a follow, give me a subscribe, give me a comment to say you've been here since day one. I've compiled this into a playlist. So if you really want to show your support, I say it's every lesson, but it means the world to me, is show this to a loved one. Um, remember, I'm talking about these circles of concern that's on my Dutch book and the American book, the circles of Heracles. Uh, Heracles was summing up a stoic concept, this um, idea um, that the small circle here is our concern for ourselves. That's the concern we have for ourselves. The next is our immediate family, uh, distant family, uh, and then the city, then the whole of mankind. And the idea is right now you're concerned with yourself. Uh, it's natural to be concerned with yourself. You're listening to stoic advice to help improve your life. So you're concerned with yourself. And if you want to draw that next ring in, then you share Stoic School with a loved one. And then if you want to go further out, you share Stoic School with a family friend and then a stranger at work, maybe, or then, you know, so on and so forth. You expand those circles. And remember, Stoicism is the guide to the good life. It can change lives. It can save lives. People have told me that. People said it saved a life. It changed my life drastically. It fixed so many problems. And you could be that 
person that does it for someone and you, they're forever and you're dead. you're forever yeah they're like oh you're a, you, um thanks um delilah thanks mary um thanks jeff you changed my life so have a beautiful day and thank you for listening